I think opportunity for me is intrinsically linked with fairness. What it means to me is probably to be given a chance. To have opportunity to go and race outside is a very big thing for me. I think some people are born with opportunity and other people never get opportunity in the first place. Sometimes something that I don't see many African riders being given. Regroup all the shattered dreams to come back together again and keep pushing on. Man. It's, a, it's a chance, you know, it's, a, it's another step forward. Okay, my name is John Karyuki. Uh, where are we? I oh God, I don't know how to answer that. Shall we come again? Not really. I yeah, not really. Finish this off? No, I think a swing. Cheers, cheers, guys. Yeah, thanks for coming out. Congrats. Okay, cheers, guys. Oh, uh, can I clap again? Or something? Yeah, nice and loud. Okay. No, dude, I took a like, two-hour nap in the back. I had a great time. I had a full seat to myself. Um, we've had a lot of, I think I'd never taken so many pee stops in one drive, and two flat tires in the car. Same vehicle twice, but they're getting more efficient at changing them. So. This is a Colin Strickland move. Look, I got a boot taped onto my top tube. Throw my, yeah. Oh, those the the handmade, the homemade boots. Homemade boots. Ready, Freddy. Cool. Let's go. Let's go bike. And and seriously, um, we really want to say thank you to you. Uh, I mean, we're here. We're in Amara, all of you, uh, came under some very trying circumstances when probably everyone in your family and all of your friends were telling you this is a very stupid idea. Uh, you said, I'm coming anyway, uh, and we can't thank you enough. My name is Michael Delagrange. I'm a human rights lawyer. Yeah, one of the people who've helped to organize the Amani Project. The Amani Project uh, is a project that came about out of necessity essentially. I spent some time with the guys here, the, the different cycling organizations, and they seemed to all be coming up to, against the same barriers. A lot of them were surrounding resources and racing opportunities. And so yeah, that's it. That's what we wanted to do with this race. Where is the start button? Why do a race in Marseille Mara? <clears throat> Very good question. When, when Simon and Michael and I sort of like sort of sat down and started to discuss this, I said to the guys, I think you've got to do it in the Masai Mara. Everyone's heard of the Masai Mara. It's got great roads, it's got great trails, it's got vast wilderness, it's got the, the allure of wildlife. Um, the Masai people are so iconic. The significance of the Masai Mara is that the whole, it's, it's a huge ecosystem. It's one of the sort of like last sort of untouched wildernesses as such in the sense that uh, you've got the great migration, wildebeest migration that comes through. Yeah, it's, it's got such a huge biodiversity of wildlife. The Big Five, it's got, yeah, everything. Colin Strickland. <laughs> uh, what are these roads like? Rough. The migration gravel race is an adventure. You know, it's such a unique experience from, from everything, just coming to, to Africa and then camping and the roads that were on. But it was so different than what you would experience in the US at, you know, 
Unbound or you know SBT. It's, it's not. It's quite rocky. It was not um, actually gravel. I think it's more, more suited maybe with a mountain bike. Like it changes your perspective of what is possible on a bike and like what a gravel race is. I think it was tough. I think it was a tough day. Yeah, I mean, and it's just incredible to see how resilient everyone who showed up here to ride, you know, really became in the end. But all in all, the race happened. I think it will get better. I think like the worst past is behind us. The good part is yet to come. I think gravel racing is possibly a better route forward because there are so many barriers for non-Europe based riders to enter professional road cycling. There's cultural barriers, there's linguistic barriers, and there's financial barriers. Let's let's just be honest, you know, the cost of road cycling, the cost of having everyone have the same equipment to be able to travel back and forth from, you know, Europe back to their homes in Kenya. I mean, it's a it's a serious outlay and the money is just not there. Um, at the same time, the roads here are just not really suited. Uh, the, the, the tarmac roads are not suited to uh, the kind of training that these guys need to be able to do to compete with the best in the world. Gravel racing is definitely an easier avenue for athletes from countries that don't have a strong history of cycling to reach a higher level. Because when you look at road racing, there is this system by which you, you know, you start off as a Cat 5 and you have to like move up through the ranks and that takes so long to actually get to a Cat 1. You know, I was at Team Sky and there's this, there's this hierarchy of the peloton. You know, we had the yellow jersey, our team was winning, so it's like any team that's not immediately around us in GC, it's like you're already at a disadvantage because you're starting every climb, you know, 30 seconds behind the front riders because you're just on a smaller team. But here, there was athletes that, you know, the day before the race was their first time ever riding a gravel bike. And instantly, they're on the start line at this big event, racing against an international peloton, and they immediately have an opportunity to show their ability. The cycling model, the cycling funding model is notoriously unstable, even in Europe. But it's just uh, times 10 here. I know the support comes, but it just never reaches to to the athletes themselves. When it goes to the federation or many federations in Africa, they have problems. It just like goes somewhere in somebody's pocket. Like when you are here, like in Kenyan races, no matter which races you do, like there's no big media coverage. Before you'll put an event and they'll you'll struggle to like attract 20 people. The thing with running is that it's it's a culture and like because the best of the best comes from Kenya. They tend to, to win uh, prize monies and they come. They build houses, they get new cars. The kids see this. They want to be the next Elid Kipchoge. For cycling, it's different because like you start cycling, they think that you're wasting your time. Now, as I say, it's changing. Like we have more media publicity. People are seeing other races in Europe and America. So with time, we hope that, you know, that can change. I think we have plenty of gravel roads in Africa and it's possible for this sport to grow so fast and like the road racing where people are getting more scared about the crazy drivers on the roads. And One of the kind of key barriers to entry for East African athletes is that the time commitment for them to travel to Europe means that they could be gone from their families and their homes for the better part of a year. And culturally, that's just very difficult. Where you look at the gravel calendar, there could be like five key races a year, but then they can come home, you know? The costs associated with getting people to, you know, a few races a year pales in comparison. You don't need million dollars to get Sule Kungani to the best gravel races. Even now, uh, with the partners we have, we can create these opportunities. Essentially, that's what the Amani Project is. We're just responding to the needs that are articulated by the different cycling clubs in Rwanda, Uganda, and Kenya, and get these guys the opportunities we think they deserve. And so, yeah, that's it. Racing opportunities, raising money, that's what we wanted to do with this race. The gravel racing, I think this is going to grow faster if there's enough support for these guys to like introduce it well and get uh, civilized about it. Who knows, one day it's going to be 
Africans being there in Tour de France or something, yeah. or being there in the big gravel races. This kind of uh, race is uh, it's a bit new to the, the community, but I think it's a, it's a very good one because most of the African uh, people, they are used to riding the bikes on the off-road. and Like when they leave their houses, their outside road is not tarmac. They, they don't have to go to 40 kilometers to find like somewhere to train. But I think for young people, the gravel for them, I think it's more natural. Yeah, the roads, no bad for me because we got used to them when we were still kids. You know, they have been riding gravel. They have been, you know, working on their on their skills and their technique. And to see some of the athletes here, like, just rip downhills, I'm like, I'm on the back foot. Like, I'm just, like, hanging on. The opportunity for these athletes to come to the U.S. means so much that they were fighting, like, tooth and nail every single stage to stay in that front group, you know? And, not just within the race, but like you see them after the race, like they're constantly thinking about, you know, how can I be ready for tomorrow? I was here to race and I raced, but I raced also in a way that helped to identify the talented riders in the peloton, which is cool to see and like to realize how big of an event this is for the East African riders. In whole Kenya, I think everybody is now new and migration is happening now. It has bring that exposure like, also in the world. If you can see also in social medias, migration is now it's a big thing. And just even seeing how much these athletes learn throughout the week, just through observation of watching Lawrence and I race, you know, part of the reason why we're here is to teach them this, this tactical sense of racing. It's giving the opportunity to the African riders to see where they are against the best. So it means a lot for us, more especially for the upcoming young riders. And in many ways, it just takes a couple athletes to have that experience, and then it's contagious, and it spreads throughout you know, this network of riders. I've learned a lot like the last four, five years in being in a continental team. So every time I get an opportunity to give advice and stuff like that, I do. So to, to go to the US and with SBT and uh, I think it will mean a lot. Like it's not only for me, but for other people who I want to encourage to see that you can't just be a, a road racer. You can start your, 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 your path and find another pathway rather than just trying to get a continental contract or, you know, trying to find your way into world to a team or something like that. Yeah, I think it's going to be really exciting to see what these guys could do. Uh, in the United States. So what did we learn from this race? I think what we learned was the Kenyans, they obviously have a knack for uh, riding off-road. This could be a good implication to show that there's potential inside this gravel racing. If we can have more races like such, there, there are going to be good uh, talents coming up. I'm interested to see what will happen with this race next year. I think that there'll be a lot of interest from other athletes wanting to come. But we have to remember that the purpose of this event is to help develop East African cyclists. What the African athletes need is a high caliber peloton to come and race against them for them to see what it's like. I think when people get a chance to come here and they see there's a leveling here, right? Like you can see that actually, you know, these guys come from a totally different culture. They speak different languages. But then you're riding side by side, suffering at the same time, smiling at the same time. And then you're just like, whoa, you know, uh, we're actually kind of similar, you know? The cycling brings us together. I hope that the project and, and the people who get a chance to experience this, recognizing that they have been given beautiful opportunities, and then also given a sense of duty. As a cyclist, I have responsibilities to make sure that everybody can enjoy my sports as well. If we manage to achieve that, and we get a coalition going, 
then possibly we can move the dial. There was a moment, I think about 15 years ago, where cycling first caught a, caught a glimpse of itself in the mirror and said, oh shit, we're really white. We've got to do something about this. And they were like, uh, just grab the best African you can and throw him in the peloton. And for all the reasons we've already discussed, it didn't work out, you know? Uh, and then everyone made up their mind. He said, these guys don't really belong here. This is some kind of charity project. And the Peloton treated them as such. This time, we aren't going to enter a gravel race until we're ready. And when we're ready, then people are going to say, oh shit, there's somebody from East Africa here. Fuck, this is going to be a hard race. That's what we want from the beginning. If there's one thing I would like everyone to know about this race is that it's not a charity. It's just not. These guys don't need handouts. They don't need your sympathy. What they need is an opportunity.